Hello artists, we are studying ancient Egyptian art and are going to be recreating some canopic jars inspired by ancient Egyptian art. The first thing we're going to need to do is put our name in class on three things. You're gonna put your name on the inside of your cup along with your class. Clay needs to dry out from all angles, so before we can start this project, we need to make sure that we put some holes in our cup. You're just gonna take your fork, make sure you support the back. If you just start jabbing it, you're gonna break your cup. Kind of give the fork a twist instead of a jab. end down here but on the closed end I want you to also write your name and class. And the last place that we need to do this is on the outer rim of our plate. We're going to be starting on wax paper today to start our canopy jars and the first thing you want to do is just take a small section of your clay. You're gonna take that hunk of clay and put it on your wax paper. With a second sheet of wax paper, you're gonna kinda of make a sandwich. Taking a Cool Whip bowl, you're gonna push down with your knuckles, and it helps if you kinda of rock your fist back and forth. After using your hand to smooth it and flatten it a little bit more, you don't want your clay to be any thinner than about a quarter inch, which looks just like that. Now what you're gonna be doing is taking the bigger portion of your cup, putting it on the clay slab that you just made, and simply use your popsicle stick as a cutting tool. In order to keep clay from drying out, you always keep it together and that's what keeps the moisture in the clay. Don't worry about what that looks like because your clay is going to remain messy looking until we are finished with the jar. What we wanna do next is do a process called cross hatching. And all we do is make small little lines in the clay, not too hard. We're just trying to rough up the surface of the clay so that when we stick more clay to it, it is more likely to stick. <clears throat> you go both directions, that's why it's called cross hatching, so they end up looking like little crosses, but don't take time to make it look pretty. It's supposed to look messy like that. You're gonna have a bowl of water, simply using your finger, I want you to put a little bit of water right along that cross hatching that you already did. For clay to stick together, we always use a little bit of water or something called slip, which is just clay mixed with water. In this case, water is going to be good enough. You're gonna now take your cup and flip it upside down and stick it right in the middle of that slab that you already made. Now that we are finished with this part, we're gonna take our project off of the wax paper. And now we're gonna move our project to the center of our plate, which is where we will keep it the whole time we're building. You can move that to the middle. What you're gonna do now is pull off another small chunk of clay, even smaller than what you've already used. You can start it in your hands, but what we're doing today is called coil building. When you coil build, you can't just roll and roll and roll because it ends up really uneven and bumpy. What you do is you put your fingers together in the middle, you roll out and away. But then to get rid of those bumpies, you take it and hit it on your table a few times and you start the process all over again. Fingers together, out and away, hit it on the table. Fingers together, out and away, hit it on the table. That's about as thin as you want your coil to be. And it's okay if you have a few imperfections, like that's a little bit skinny right there. Because we had wet clay already, this should stick nicely. You're gonna wrap it around the base of your cup. Now when you get to the point where you already have some clay, all you do is go right over top of it and overlap. You're gonna keep repeating this process until you have coiled all the way up your cup. Now 
Because we're adding more clay, we need to do some more cross hatching. And we also need to add a little bit more water. Find the end of the coil that you left off with and start there. Keep it nice and close to the cup and push down just gently so that the coils stick together. If the coils get too thin, just pinch that section off and don't use it. This is what the side of the clay is starting to look like, just nice rows of coils with no spaces between them. Now that we're at the top of the cup, if you do have a little extra coil left over, just pinch that off. But I want you to look around the cup and if there's another area that needs added to, like I'm not covered here, but I am covered here, then you can just take the rest of that coil, roll it out, and don't forget to cross hatch and to add your water. And I still need to fill in one section. Now that I am to the very top of my cup, the last thing we're going to do before we can store it is we're gonna smooth out those edges. You're gonna leave yours flat on your plate. You can stick your hand in for some support. And all you do is start from the very bottom of the cup and work your way up so that those coils start to actually join together and not have any cracks in them. Work your way all the way around spinning your plate as you go. You're not gonna pick up your clay project anymore, so make sure you leave it on the plate. If a coil starts to come apart like that, you can work your way down first, then you can start to pull up again. If you get little pieces on your stick, you can add them to your leftovers. This is what your clay project should look like after you have sealed it with your popsicle stick. The last thing we're gonna do before we clean up today is use a sponge to smooth the outer edges with some water. All right, you're gonna dip your sponge, wring it out. You do not need very much water at all, so wring it out all the way. Leave your clay attached to your plate. It will stick and that's how it's supposed to go. And now you're just gonna take some water and start to smooth the project out. Make sure you keep your supportive hand inside of your cup. As you're smoothing, you wanna look for any areas that are not level with the cup. Like this is all very level, but right there it's not. So if that happens to you, you just need to add another little piece of clay right to the top and smooth it back out. The bottom of the jar is a place that a lot of people miss when they're smoothing. When you do it, you want to kind of push hard and get right up at the plate. Your sponge can go back down into your cup. The only sink we can use for this project because of that clay, that will clog up my sinks. The only sink we can use for this project is sink number three. There is a clay basin underneath the sink that you cannot see that catches all of that debris. So when we wash our hands today or pour out our water, we will only be using sink number three. Any excess clay that you have, I will have a bag sitting up at my desk. It needs to be returned to that bag. It belongs to the art room. Your finished project, smoothed and all, looks very messy, but looks something like this, and it will start to dry out. What we need to do is put that bag right over top, and I want to be able to see your name facing up. As you look around the plate, make sure the bag is tucked down and that your clay is being nice and protected. You are gonna carry this entire project, plate and all, to the shelf or the table where I show you. 
Now that your project has been put away, before you can wash your hands, we need to take care of the mess at our tables. Like I said, make sure you only use the correct sink for your sponge and bowl. You're gonna pour it out in the sink, rinse the bowl really well, and then turn it upside down so it can dry out. You also need to rinse out the sponge, clean it out nice and clean, and put it in the bowl next to the sink. You may put your tongue depressors in the bowl next to the sink as well. Using a wet wash rag, you need to open it up all the way. Don't leave it like a ball. Open it up all the way and clean your table. You may leave your table to air dry while you go wash your hands.